short of the new one. <laughs> My name is Pete. Hi there. Hi Pete. And uh, I grew up in the uh, Mechanicsburg area. Anybody familiar with Mechanicsburg up towards Harrisburg? Well, I grew up in that area. And grew up. Uh, my father was a warehouseman at uh, Navy Supply Depot right across the street from a little development called Knoll Acres. I grew up there. Uh, started drinking about, gosh, maybe 14, 15 years old with the kids in the neighborhood whose parents would leave during the day and leave a fully stocked bar and pool table and slot machines and all this stuff in the basement. We got into partying in there all the time. And started using smoking dope about 18. Uh, got my first uh, DUI going down the Dan Ryan Expressway in Chicago at about 20, 20 years old, driving a little sports car. <coughs> Working for the airlines at the time in Chicago. Uh, I'd also been arrested twice for underage drinking by that time. Drinking was a big part of my life. Flunked uh, my first army physical while I was living in Chicago because they said I was a diabetic. Well, that's only because I was drinking a bottle of whiskey every day. It had nothing to do with being a diabetic, but uh, I'm not a diabetic today, by the way. I came back to this area and got my second DUI. Uh, driving south and northbound lanes of Route 83, a tractor trailer missed me on a Saturday afternoon. and. Thank God they didn't hit anybody or kill anybody, but uh, uh, of course both times I lost my license for a year. Uh, time went on and I, I kind of got into the insurance business around 1970, uh, and I've done a little bit of everything. I've been involved in claims, marketing, management, I was vice president of an insurance company. Uh, I've traveled extensively for different insurance companies. Uh, Right around the late 80s, I was working for a company right here in New York. Actually, I was the uh, only officer and, and manager of a company on uh, Market Street in Belmont there. We had a building right there. It's a wholesale insurance operation. And around that time, uh, it was kind of like when I crashed. I was uh, vice president of a company there, driving a company, paid Mercedes, wearing expensive suits, traveling extensively for them. Part of my job was entertaining clients in the Caribbean, which uh, was down there on a regular basis, uh, got into scuba diving, got, did a lot of neat stuff down there. A lot of drinking. I mean, part of the culture was Drake Hardy and uh, still smoking dope. But here I am, vice president of a company. I still always have a bag, you know, a bag and a pipe. Uh, that went on and on. My insurance career continued to flourish. I mean, I was a functional alcoholic. I always had a job, always had paid my bills, always got to work on time, all that kind of stuff but I always partied. That was part of my job as a, as a marketing vice president was to entertain your clients. So I did very well at that. If they wanted to go out and party all day, I did all that stuff. But right around the late 80s, early 90s, I crashed. I mean, I, I just, uh, I left my first wife, I left my 16-year-old daughter, and uh, I was just miserable. Here I'm making all this money, have all this stuff, which was really the focus of my life, having as much stuff as I could acquire. Things, toys, fancy trips, I loved all that stuff, but you know what, it just, I was miserable. Uh, I was working out at West Manchester Athletic Club, you might know what that is, out on West York there, and I met a pastor out there, and he started talking to me, and I was like, first time I, first time he came up and talked to me, I pretty much told him to get out of my face, I said I really wasn't interested in, in this religious stuff, you know, these Jesus freaks. And, uh, <laughs> then I met this lady back here, who's now my wife, uh, on, a, on a hike one day, and she's telling me, about this Jesus person too, and I'm thinking another Bye. Jesus freak. Bye. So we got uh, dating, and uh, we eventually got married. And I, and I promised her that I would go to church after we got married. And so she picked some churches, I picked some churches. And long story short, uh, I got saved through the uh, York Grace Brother Church out on near Fawfrier Park through uh, the ministry of uh, Dan White and, and my wife Brenda. Gave my life to Jesus, and at that time, I was still working for this company here in New York, and they still wanted me to do the things I'd always been doing, which was entertaining clients. And, and our first anniversary, our first anniversary being married, I had to go, they said, you have to go on this trip. And of course, you know you can't take your wife along. Absolutely not. And I said, man, I can't do that. I mean, I can't do that stuff anymore. And there were other things that I, they wanted me to do that I just, I couldn't do anymore. And I said, I can't do that anymore. Well, they waited till the end of that year, and the day after all the tax filings were done that I had, I was responsible for, they walked in with a severance check and said goodbye. So, 
<laughs> you know, when you're making a lot of money like that, and you know it's wrong, and, and you know it's wrong, and it's like, it's hard to change, though. It's hard to say, oh, I can't do this anymore. Well, God took care of it for me. Yeah. They fired my butt, so. <laughs> anyway, uh, the neat part of the story is getting discipled at the York Grace Brethren Church for many, many years, uh, being uh, Pastor Dan White. Many, many Monday mornings, many, many long nights, uh, just studying the Word, being discipled. It was just an awesome experience. Um, we went on several missions trips, which were really life-changing experiences. We went to Chile one year. We went to Europe on a prayer walking ministry. We went to New Orleans right after Katrina. I'll never forget that experience. Three months after Katrina, we were down there with Billy Graham organization serving food and, and ministering to people, and that was just a life-changing experience. We've been on other missions trips, different places. But the neat thing of this story is all those things that I had, all the places I got to travel to, don't compare anything to what we're doing now. Right. And right now, this brother and my wife and Ed who's sitting beside her, we are leaders that celebrate recovery in Columbia. Right. And that's far more exciting and far more rewarding than anything I've ever done, any place I've ever visited, any toy I've ever had. Amen. And... Uh, God is good. Amen. Amen. Amen.